quarter of a billion dollar contract go out there on one leg and try to grit it out for the team because he knows that the success of all of us, you know, it's it's an 11 man unit out there, but it is predicated on his success. And for him to go out there and show us that early in the season, um, you know, he's a special guy. So um, I obviously I'm not on Joe watch. I don't know how he is. He looks pretty good. We had a good crisp day today. Um, but I think the biggest thing that came out of early in the season is that, you know, everyone knows how tough this guy is and went out there and, and, and showed it. How much did they move around Fred Warner and Nick? Both um, I mean, not crazy. They, they play where they're, they're they, where they play where they play. Um, they have a few different variations, but I think the 49ers are, uh, obviously they're a very well coached team, but this is a defense has had a lot of success because they win a lot of individual matchups and um, you know, Fred's the mic, and he's going to be right there in the middle. And I, you know, I have a very, very high opinion of him. Um, and his film, it, it just keeps getting better. You know, as I've studied him this week, but just throughout his whole career, I've always thought he was a very, very good player. So, we got to go get a hat on a hat on him and block him up uh, to have success on the run and pass. In training camp, you went against uh, Logan and Pratt, obviously, every day. Any any familiarity with uh, those? I mean, these are probably the two best linebacker groups in the league, probably going at it. Yep, yeah, I th I'd probably throw Tampa Bay in there too. Um, you know, maybe Buffalo, but yeah, I think you know, Jermaine and Logan are incredible, and they're a huge reason why our defense plays how they play. But um, you know, I'm just watching. Fred gets off a lot of blocks very quickly, so we're going to have to get on him, latch him up, and, and get a hat on a hat so we can have some success in the run game. You think that's what makes, makes him so good, Fred, uh, just his leverage? He's also a, a big man. He's 6'3", 230. Uh, he can run. Um, he's a very smart player. He's He's been at the top of the league since he entered the league and, you know, uh, always have a lot of respect for your opponent, but, you know, Fred is a guy that has been at the top of the you know his position for a long time, so... You know, we're definitely accounting for him and going to go out there and, and, and get a hat on him. What about the interior of that D-line? Everyone talks especially about Bosa because he's the, the star. Yeah. The interior of that D-line stands out. I mean, they're really good. Yep. I uh, played against Javon uh, Hargrave since uh, the Shrine Bowl back in 2016. Um, I remember they were saying there's this one, there's this stud kid from South Carolina State and the other team, and, and he's proven that uh, for the last eight years. And then you got Armstead as well, um, Ken Law is very good as well and they just signed Randy Gregory so this is a dangerous front with a lot of uh, individual talent and they play well together as a group so um, we have to be at our very best come Sunday afternoon. Is it talent fitting scheme? Is it scheme fitting talent? I mean what do you, what do you think it is? I think it's it's both I mean it's this is the NFL so you have to have a combination of that they're a very well coached team um, I mean the last two DC's they've had have moved on to head coaching roles so um, you know that they're you know, growing talent from the inside and developing guys based on their scheme, but also who have tremendous individual ability. So uh, it's a good team, and we're going to have to go out there and win.